Da, 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 da. I don't even have one. I just need to stop you. Let me Google around looking at the page and then I found a page. Here we go. Here it comes. I want a munch. What? I want to munch. What? Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast. Duncan. Uh, we got a Duncan in Huntington. This isn't the Munch Squad. I'm just mentioning. Now I'll be able to try the Duncan offerings first hand. You don't do Duncan. you don't do that with the garbage that you bring here for the show, right? No, you're not you're not actually like experimenting first hand with these things, right? Sometimes sometimes the picture looks good. Oh. Um, and I wanna try it. And I probably would have tried it anyway. I get excited. Hey, listen, my Rite Aid got Rite Aid got bought out by Walgreens. And I'm the idiot that walked in after they did the remodel and is like commenting to the employees like, God, it's really bright in here. It looks great. This is so spacious. <laughs> Don't you love this? I'm loving this. You guys loving this? This is not an exaggeration. That I did that. Uh, so Duncan has launched Peeps Coffee and a Peeps Donut for spring. Okay. Peep flavor is starting to get into things. There's Peep Creamer now I got and Peep Cereal okay. and Peeps don't have a flavor it's folks it's marshmallows with sugar on it folks and marshmallow really is puffed sugar so we're just kind of talking about sugar mostly folks yeah you're telling me that you've made sugar flavored creamer mm -hmm. that's right and it doesn't taste like anything except sugar and now that's in a coffee and a donut mm -hmm. it's uh peeps marshmallow flavor coffee and espresso drinks and the peeps donut is Topped with an iconic yellow chick. That's right, folks. They just put a chick just on the put donut. A fucking one right on there. And the shelf life of these bad boys after you remove them from the packaging is about nine seconds before they turn crunchy and inedible. So, are they doing these things to order? Because that would be kind of wild. Uh, yeah, they're they're just slap. They're opening up a dis discreet package. Uh, as you as you uh, pull up and uh, slap it on there, so you can just uh, enjoy a donut with a peep on it. Um, now, because I did pick this so quickly, there's not really anything funny about this one because I was just trying to get you to stop talking oh, about shoot. the dirty stuff. Okay. So there's not really anything good. Well, hold on. Uh, let's find that. the. Let's find the. I had a joke earlier. I didn't really have time to do, but maybe it could make it funny. When you Perfect, just yeah. say that, like a uh, sugar flavored creamer again, say they did that. Oh, so they made okay. sugar flavored creamer. Mm, sugar creamer. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All right. First, you take the sugar, and then you put it in the creamer. Okay, mm, Carl's J here. That was a Munch Squad Junior. Then Carl's Junior had a bacon one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, did you have one you wanted I to do? do? You want to get a hand? I, I want to kind of piggyback ball? off of what Griffin said, and this okay. is kind of an alley oop to Justin. Oh, good. Please see where I'm going with this. Sugar creamer, good. more like sugar Kramer. Sugar, sugar creamer. I hardly sugar knew know her. <laughs> <laughs> that was the three pointer. Whoa, That's shit. what you got for that. Dang. Uh, a real quick note, Carl's Jr. added a bacon truffle burger and a bacon truffle cheese fries. This image is not going to drive me anywhere except out of my fucking mind. <laughs> this is this is a horrid thing that you should seek out and see for yourself. I'm going to link you guys just so you can see in the chat there. You can see the oh, image of the burger. One. That's a tall one. It's, that is. It's just layers upon layers of horrid. And it's a menu innovation, they call it here, oh. with no trace of irony. It features a decadent truffle-infused white cheddar sauce, which has a deep, rich, and savory flavor, including notes of garlic, toasted onion, and aged Parmesan. The burger includes a charbroiled 100% Black Angus beef patty topped with premium white cheddar truffle sauce, two slices of applewood smoked bacon, crispy onion straws, Swiss cheese, caramelized onions. This fucking thing. They made this. They made that. Uh, they made that. Okay. And then at the end, they were like, and mayonnaise? And then, yes, mayonnaise Good. on this thing. No, um, here's a quote about this crime. The launch of our new bacon truffle Angus burger connects back to our dedication to introducing bold, craveable, and unexpected flavors to our menu in interesting ways. 
this guy had to come up with it. I think they like ran into his office. They're like, we already started recording. Quick, say something about the Black Angus <laughs> Trouble Burger. It um, connects back to our dedication to introducing bold, craveable, and unexpected flavors in interesting ways. You already said unexpected. Yeah, I know, but I'm just making it up as I go. Truffle is traditionally viewed as a rare indulgence. And we're bringing it to the everyday dining experience. <laughs> do you do you trust us, Hardies, with that? And we're we are Hardies. Don't forget, we have a different name, but we're still Hardies. But anyway, do you want this fancy forest mushroom that a pig dug up? I I want to meet the person who's eating this. He's like, look at me, Vicky. I'm eating truffles. I'm like a king. Oh my god. Oh, and that's from uh. Uh, is uh, infusing the distinct truffle flavor into an entirely new offering for our burger loving customers. Oh, sorry, dirt bag <laughs> says here. <laughs> Owen says Owen Klein from the chain. During the testing phase, <laughs> imagine this. During the testing phase, Carl's Jr. bacon truffle Angus burger outperformed all benchmarks, <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> including taste, uniqueness, and quality. Sir, it's off the charts my god my god my god we've now, done it again now we're all sons of bitches <laughs> <laughs> we're and it says here we're thrilled to add the elegant taste of truffle to this this sandwich has bacon and onion straws and Swiss cheese and hamburger and cheddar truffle sauce and mayonnaise on it. And you are going to take the word elegant and just jam it up your ass. Like there's no me There's no meaning behind anything anymore. Yeah. This bad boy. This is a, this looks like a wet aggro crag that I'd have to climb and eat from the top down. This is a big, big mound of, it's mound a of challenging, sand. challenging, bite. A challenging sandwich, a challenging burger. Anyway, that's all there is to know about that, that Carl's Jr. Now, it doesn't mention specifically Hardee's. So I don't know if they're leaving Hardee's out in the cold on this one. This may just be a Carl Jr. Ridge. A Hardee's would never serve a burger like this. No, 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 you'll mess me up. Stop, everybody, stop. <laughs> I want to munch. I want to munch. As everybody noticed, April Fool's Day just came and went. That was actually the day that my brain kept me up because we flew on April 1st. That's that a was great its, joke. That's its joke. Um, but it's been a little different for this week's Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast about the latest and greatest in brand eating. And uh, I want to talk about some of the April Fool's skits. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> all the uh, different brands did. This is going to be tough because anything you've ever talked about in this segment could pass as an April Fool's Day <laughs> skit. That's what I want to do with this is um, kind of set the barometer. Yeah. You know, for where... So 7-Eleven... Oh, if any of these are less wild than, than a Peeps donut, then... So 7-Eleven is going to do an avocado toast Slurpee. <laughs> it's good. It's good. I got to give this one I bet up. I, you know, we will love that. Millennials. <laughs> one, one's more, Griffin? Millennials. <laughs> So they went to um, checkers and rallies, and someone, the president of the company said, we needed a good joke. <laughs> and someone at the company said, I got one. Unseasoned fries. <laughs> I like that one actually quite a bit. But that's sometimes too salty. Too salty. Very funny, though. I think <laughs> we can all agree. Very funny. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts, or sorry, Dunkin'. Dunkin' Donuts is my dad. <laughs> Dunkin' Dunkin' ha, di, said they did a donut so big you can use it as a cup holder. No! Oh, for their coffee. God. <laughs> Hardee's is hiring a... Listen to this one, folks. You're about to bust, bust your fucking sides clean open. Hardee's is hiring a CBO. That's Chief Biscuit Officer... <laughs> You're not going to believe this one is a joke. 
Jersey Mike's is advertising a stack sub. That's two subs on top of each other. <laughs> Whoa! Griffin had a heart attack! Ah! It was too funny! The jokes are too dank! <laughs> McDonald's Australia is advertising the McPickle burger. That's a burger that's all pickles. Okay, actually, wait. The, the punchline of this is when it was announced as a joke, people lost their fucking minds. Because yeah. they wanted all those low-grade pickles, and they wanted to chew a bunch of them at the same time. <laughs> McDonald's Canada is offering McNugget singles. <laughs> <laughs> For when you just want one <laughs> nugget. <laughs> McDonald's Germany is doing <laughs> a Big Mac-flavored smoothie. <laughs> McDonald's is doing uh this is actually pretty good that's brilliant they're doing shake sauce for fries so you can dip it that's in like good, a little actually. okay that's of... definitely a backdoor pilot though right yeah. that's what i'm <laughs> saying <laughs> right wouldn't it be funny yeah oh that be weird what do you think here's the one that really like really fucking bothers me <laughs> oreo said hold on i got one and they run up to the mic all wild <laughs> and they're like listen i got one Shh, everybody shut up, listen. What if we did a cookie where the cream was on the outside, the cookie's in the middle? <laughs> no, but like, the cookie's normally on the outside. Someone gets paid to do that. Uh, uh, here, my personal favorite. I'm thinking about the logistics of that. It's a lot. Uh, From a fulfillment standpoint. My personal favorite, and you all aren't going to believe this one was a, was a real joke, but um, Carl's Jr. invented um, the vape cup. <laughs> the science of this. They, they did the damn thing, folks. <laughs> that that is science, actually solid. The science of this is legit. Basically, it's a straw where the juice is in the middle and the battery's at the bottom. So when you inhale your drink, your, your, your soda, you also are gonna get just a huge blast of vape. You're just gonna vape right into your own body. Hey, here's three words, Pop-Tarts ravioli. Maybe I would argue a Pop-Tart is already ravioli. Yeah, redundant a bit. Red Lobster is doing Twizzler straws. What? Red Lobster is doing Twizzler straws as an eco-friendly alternative to plastic straws. That's fucking a good idea. Yes. So anyway, <laughs> everything's terrible. This, this is my favorite. This this place I never heard of called the Stone Fire Grill. <laughs> a bottle of white. A bottle of red. Why don't you call me the this dude actually, instead? It, there it, it is. has a fucking bird on it. It's <laughs> Paul, if you're listening later, Paul has brought us wine, and he is a hero. Uh, I want to, while Paul... <laughs> <laughs> Drink that spit wine now, Griffin. Um, while, while Paul is pouring... Um, I have white in here, Paul, but if you want to pour some red on top of it. Make it a blush. Make it a blush. Um, if you want to pour some red wine into my real? Stella. Yeah, please. Uh, Stonefire Grill, which I've never heard of, tweeted, it's time to move on to new menu items, and we have to get rid of some old favorites to make room. This is the last week to enjoy our freshly baked breadsticks. <laughs> so that was their joke. <laughs> We're not going to make mistakes anymore. <laughs> That'd be like if McDonald's was like, hey, everyone, Grimace fucking died. <laughs> JK, he's immortal. Yeah. There are so many of there on there that you haven't said. I'm just... What is wrong? How much time did they spend developing these when they could have been making their food taste good? <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, those are the highlights of the... Of the I'm just fun. thinking about that two sandwiches stacked on... Can you fucking imagine? 
God. The coffee bean, uh, their fucking April Fool's gag was announcing that they would be replacing pellet-shaped ice with regular ice cubes. You got to be deep in the fucking coffee so bean deep, fandom right? to yeah, let that one sink hard. in. Yeah, you're hard. Question. Another questione. Here we go. Another question. Coming at you. Oh okay. my God, Justin. I'm interrupting myself this time because I thought that was more polite. Yeah. I want to munch. God. I've got some drainage and I want to munch. Squad. And it's messing up my voice. Quick update. Don't do the Duncan uh, shoes. I did the Duncan shoes. Quick update before we get in. Welcome to the family. Fresh & Co. launching a cannabis focused menu. It's a special 420 hemp and CBD infused menu uh, that launches exclusively on Fresh & Co. app on April 9th. You fucked up. We'll be in restaurants from <laughs> April 12th through April 30th. Fresh & Co. executive Craig Rispoli curated the menu in collaboration with Jeepney's chef Miguel Trinidad. And just so you're plugged into where the scene is at, they got the half-baked shrimp salad, which is hemp cakes, hemp mixed greens, sea beans, red onion, whatever. There's a CBD-infused ginger cashew aioli on that. Good. There's a blazed beet sandwich. Mm. Again, this is CBD, folks, <laughs> is, and hemp, which they can make ropes out of. None of this is, these sandwiches will not get you high. They're not going to get you high. I wish to God these companies would stop making sandwiches pretending they're going to get you high. I see. I want to talk very quickly about Topper's Pizza, which just added pretzel bites to its value menu. I've never been to a Topper's Pizza, and I don't know anyone who has. But I feel like I've learned a lot about Topper's Pizza, namely that... Um, the person they talk to, namely the president, doesn't give a shit about these press releases. <laughs> it could not be. <laughs> Topper's Pizzas continue its commitment to great pizza and quality offerings, all at an affordable price, thanks to the launch of its newest value item, Pretzel Bites. Built on the belief that better doesn't have to cost more, in the words of founder and president of Topper's Pizza, Scott Gittrich, the brand rolled out a pick Scott, any two or more Scott from... Scott Get Rich? Scott Get Rich. That's and not they, that's a fake person's name. His it's name's Scott Get Rich. President Scott is a CEO. <laughs> the the five ninety nine value menu lets customers choose any two of the following: baked mac and cheese, gooey monkey bread, half pound orders of boneless wings, and single orders of topper sticks, <laughs> plus any medium two topping pizza. Uh, folks, if you want to put weed into food. That's your route there right there. I, That's where you're going to put weed in. I know what it is, and I do enjoy it, but hearing the phrase gooey monkey bread is like, yeah, do you want to, I, 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 it's upsetting. It's viscerally upsetting. So these toppers pretzel bites are snack ready morsels fried to perfection and dusted with sea salt. <laughs> in case you're curious, uh, cost, customers can, this is the weird, one of the weirder lines. Customers can pick from any dip and sauce with nacho cheese, the brand's favorite. Oh, <laughs> that's exactly what it says with nacho cheese, the brand's favorite. <laughs> oh. The 5 dollars value item includes 12 pretzel bites. And so they come to Scott, get rich. And they say, Scott, Scott, give me a quote, Scott. We need a quote. This uh, press release is going out hot. Give me a quote for the Pretzel Bites press release. For almost 30 years, we've been relentlessly committed to doing pizza better, says Scott Gerrich. That means our fans shouldn't compromise on quality in pursuit of affordability. Our ever-expanding value menu reflects that. Scott. Scott. How do you begin with, we are relentlessly committed to doing pizza better, and your next sentence is, and folks, we've strayed from the path. <laughs> <laughs> these, these abominations <laughs> that have nothing to do with pizza. Bread I, should not be bathed in an alkaline bath. It goes against my beliefs. So Scott Iverson, the VP of marketing for Topper's Pizza, good, busts in the room. Good He's Scott. Like, Wait, Scott, hey, it's me. Nice Scott. <laughs> and that quote was terrible. Here, I'm going to get people horny for pretzels. Not again, you good tired. Scott. You've twisted. You've <laughs> you twisted, twisted my bread our... dreams. We work tirelessly to make sure our pizza lovers enjoy a variety of complimentary options that we develop after closely attending to the data. What? 
What data? We work tirelessly to make sure our pizza lovers enjoy a variety of complimentary options that we develop after closely attending to the data. <laughs> what the living fuck? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Man, I'm hungry for pretzel bites. Do you know good place? Well, we make good pizza and look at data. Do you want some of these? Every I time like you order a Topper's pizza, as you open the box, someone rises up from behind your couch like, don't mind me. Just observing the data. <laughs> yes. I'm minding the data I think, on this. I think of myself as something of an appetizer sommelier. So it looks like you're having a sausage and mushroom, might I suggest, the fried pretzel bites. <laughs> <laughs> they are dusted with sea salt. And now you will never fill guess out this form. My favorite dusting, my favorite dipping is the nacho cheese, of course. It's the restaurant's favorite. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you like. We've attended to the data. It's all of your favorites. So uh, y'all want another Yahoo? I felt that yes, one. Griffin, I would like another Yahoo. All right, this Yahoo was sent in by Graham Roma. Thank you, Graham. Oh, I love, Yahoo answers I love user. Stone. Stone asks, and this one's really fucking funny. Um, this I'm one's so really excited. gonna bust, bust guts and nuts in the audience tonight. You said this one's gonna bust a nut? It's guts and nuts. Um, this one, this one is so funny with Lalo, even the, the big man, Cager. Oh, corn's here. What a munch! Squad. I want a munch! Squad. Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast that I feel like is in its... It's in its it's in its twilight years. I feel like, and not to be sad, and there's still plenty of Munch Squad on the horizon, but I feel like we're probably round the bend on people being so buck wild. I'm not gonna say it has anything to do with Munch Squad, but I'm not saying gonna say that I did not kill this particular golden goose. Okay. But we've still got a few left in us, and I just want to bring it home strong. I do want to give everybody real quick a quick Munch Squad Junior with the update. Uh, welcome to the family, Carl's Jr. I testing a CBD I burger knew it. I fucking in knew Denver it. on 420. First ever quick service restaurants to introduce CBD infused item. Uh, it's named the Rocky Mountain High Cheeseburger okay. Delight, and that is the fuckers. CBD. It's CBD. There. It features two charbroiled patties with the signature Santa Fe sauce infused with CBD. Pickled jalapenos, pepper jack cheese, and crisp cut fries right on there to give the what? burger the extra crunch. That's easily the weirdest part of the whole burger, I would say. That's the weirdest part of it. Listen to this. The new menu item will be available at 4050 Colorado Boulevard, Denver on April 20th. Yes, that's right, 420. Beginning at 6 a.m. Oh. Hey. <laughs> hey. How's the morning going? Huh. Pretty good. I just ate a... Uh, I ate a weed hamburger at 6.30 a.m. So I feel like the day's off to a good start. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I want to, um, I got big news from DQ. They've just unveiled a new tagline. Oh, no. That's the worst. That's the worst thing they could have been unveiling. Yeah. They're in, unveiling a new tagline. Here it comes. You ready? Happy take good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's already really great. Happy tastes good. <laughs> huh. Happy tastes good. Good happy taste. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I guess daddy like was taken. So now we got it. Happy tastes good. Mm. The cakes and creams taste happy. And good. 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 Mm. With happy tastes good. Good taste? No, Comma, happy, happy tastes good. In, end of slogan. Happy tastes good. With fresh deals, sweet new treats, and crave-worthy eats that make any meal feel like an indulgence. <laughs> because it is. I mean, folks, you're eating at Dairy Queen. It is an indulgence of a sort. Yeah. Uh, it is reinforcing that it's a smile above the rest and a destination for happy moments and memories and diarrhea later, presumably. To celebrate happy tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> What a great so, sentence. Someone was paid for. Uh, there's new Sunday toppings like rich choco chunks, crunchy praline pieces, and smooth, I swear to God, it's called this smooth midnight fudge. <laughs> oh my God. A little bit of that midnight fudge. A midnight fudge. Um, these, uh, so they got a deal. And. Maria Hokinson, who's the something there, 
says, we love being at the center of our fans' happiest memories. The center of my happiest memory? Why, it's a meal at Dairy Queen. <laughs> Whether it's toasting to a team win, celebrating a birthday, or simply treating yourself to make the everyday just a little more special. Fuck, man. I just thought of somebody that tried to make a boring day more special by eating at Dairy Queen, and it's the most depressing thing I've ever heard in my entire life, but happy tastes good. <laughs> It's about the joyful moments you experience when you visit one of our restaurants from the first bite to the last spoonful. The last spoonful here is either the last spoonful of your food or the last spoonful before you realize that you only have the one human body yeah. and what are you doing to it and you have to go. Now, here's the wildest part about this release. To prove the DQ brand really is in the business of happy, ADQ, that's American Dairy Queen, Network, I guess, commissioned a national consumer survey, which found that. Okay. Um, by the way, if you want to preserve numbers as something that, uh, and statistics as something of a constant in your life that you rely on to become more informed or that you find any use or value in them, uh, please stop listening now because Dairy Queen is about to strip that away. 69% of the pe nice bill of the people surveyed believe that having a blizzard treat is a happier way to start the summer than activities such as taking a road trip, 43%, wearing shorts, 40%, what? or cannonballing into a pool, 29%. Oh my God. What? What was the structure of the question asked? What is the structure of that fucking question? Because I, one, I added all your numbers and you're fucked. <laughs> it's all fucked <laughs> straight to death, okay? That's all fucked. <laughs> 69% of people believe that having a blizzard treat is a happier way to start the summer than wearing shorts. Did you so, just ask people, like, would you rather have some ice cream or put on some shorts right shorts? now? You, what would be a happier start to your summer? Eating ice cream in slacks or wearing shorts? I imagine they only asked 10 people. Would you? What's a better way to start your summer? Eating a cool, refreshing blizzard treat at Dairy Queen? Smiles taste good? Or uh, wearing some fucking shorts. Is that a good way to start your summer? And four people went, uh, shorts, I guess. And the other six people went, rightly so. What the fuck are you talking about? Time to pull on my shorts. Ah, it's June 23rd. <laughs> Let's go. You can't, you can't put on shorts. Like, okay, these people who said, okay, of all those, I think the best start is cannonballing into a pool. Cool. Are you doing that in slacks? Are yeah. you wearing jeans and cannonballing into the pool? No, you're not. I, I would this, also, maybe they like literally held up like a blizzard and said, do you want to eat this? And then they held up a pair of shorts. I said, or do you want to put on my shorts? And yeah. people were like, uh, I guess I'll eat the blizzard. <laughs> like, I thought so. Do you want to take okay. off your clothes right now in front of everyone <laughs> here in Times Square? and put on these shorts? Or would you rather have this refreshing blizzard treat? And guess what? I'm gonna one up that shit. It's covered in smooth midnight fudge. Can I do neither? All right, how about <laughs> you I eat this? About my day? You eat this or I push you into a pool. Like, uh, um, please don't do that. Or I'm gonna drop, I'm put you in the trunk of this car and drive you across the country. Please don't done. do that. I'm not done. Fif okay, listen, listen. 56% said dipping a DQ chicken strip into sauce feels like a group hug for your taste buds. Wow. <laughs> no, they didn't. They agree. They checked a box next to that sentence that Dairy Queen wrote. Right. Yeah. But that means that 44% of the people just stared at the question asker in silence. Like, what could that mean? What? What could that possibly mean? Trump is president. What are you talking about? <laughs> there's there's real things going on in the world. You're wasting are, my time. What on earth are you talking about? The last statistic they have here. 53% said a trip to a DQ location is as happy as finding $20 in your pocket. Wrong. What on earth could that mean? You can, you, if, if you find the $20, you could go to Dairy Queen with it. Yeah. What on earth? What on earth do you mean? Mm. The cycle begins anew. History repeats itself. Apparently. Would you guys like to enjoy the Munch Squad segment? Uh, uh oh. Wow. What a polite and calm way of entering the segment. Yeah, hold on. No has never been an 
option because in, uh, well, and it's twi- and it's Twilight Years. The Munch Squad wants to be remembered for being a considerate segment that tried to make room for the new kids coming up. Not that his brothers um, come up with segments of their own, but as as it sort of like dips into the sunset, yeah, it wants to be remembered as like a a, a segment that made room for the the new guys coming but up. But the two segments I've done, everyone them. hates. Yeah. Which ones are they? That would be uh, Sad Lives and Riddle Me Piss. <laughs> Could you try maybe different, better ones? Would be I, I'm doing my best. I, I and for the record, Riddle Me Piss is, has a 100 percent success That's rate fair. and has never died in the vine. That's true. And everyone loves. It's just harder for you to do. So you don't. Okay, I'm, that's fair. I'm gonna start review doing recaps of the good fight on the CBS All Access streaming channel, okay. based on entirely on guesswork. Okay. <laughs> this is a very, um, and it's called the Good Recap. And this is something I've been pitching. And Justin, I guess if you want to step aside and let me do the Good Recap, or are you like dead <laughs> set on Munch Squad? No, I got, I got it. Uh, so. I wish I could do it with strings. That would be more appropriate as Twilight Years. Yeah. Oh, like like a da, full da, 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 da. I want to munch. Squad. Squad. Da, 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 da. I want to munch. Squad. Squad. So, um, I have a, a quick one here that, that is very good. It's a Munch Squad Jr. kind of. Krispy Kreme is launching a new fruit inspired donut lineup. And instead of just, you know, serving fruit. Yeah, it's actually amazing because they have four new donuts that look, that are shaped and decorated like fruit. Yeah. (laughs) So there's there's a strawberry donut and there's a pineapple uh, donut and there's a key lime donut, but they are all. They're donuts, I guess, but they try to make it. So if someone was like looking at you through a, the uh, the the uh, barrel of a sniper rifle, they were try look, citing you for assassination. They might think for a moment, like, wait a minute, I think they're eating fruit. I think we need to call off the hit. They're turning it around. I was supposed to kill someone that was eating a donut, but this yeah. couldn't be them. Look how healthy they or are. Or alternatively, somebody's looking for their blind date. And they told them, "I'll be, I'll be the one eating a big strawberry <laughs> the size of my fucking face, and then maybe a love connection happens. Maybe it's and my thing is good maybe. instead of death, like yours. Oh, maybe. Uh, so that's ha- that's that is uh, right now they're doing strawberry. Get there. Just kicked off today. Um, I think I want to tell you about um." God, I have so many really great ones right now. McDonald's is doing something new. You know, they're sunsetting the signature crafted line. Ah, I know, I know. It's really oh, hard. They were so wet, though. Every one of those I yeah. ever ate was so just sopping wet with too many uh, ingredients. Yeah. I love the way it always gooshed out the back. It gooshed out the back like a guacamole gusher. I'm heartbroken over here. <sighs> So, um, McDonald's is going to bring worldwide favorites to the menu. McDonald's is where you're going to go for international cuisine. It's the next best thing to travel mm. is just to go over to your local McDonald's. Um, some of them have been, already been tested stateside. Um, like the Grand Mc... <laughs> one of the items is called the Grand McExtreme. Get out. Bacon uh, burger. I had one of these in Gay Perry, I believe, once. The Grand Mick Extreme Bacon Burger is from Spain. Oh, like shit. MC it's a, Extreme? It's a fresh beef. The Mick, Extre- the Mick Extreme. Rolls. Like McElroy, but without the Elroy and add Extreme. The, the Grand Mick Extreme Bacon Burger is a fresh beef quarter pounder. Top with McBacon sauce. Stop. Bacon. Okay. Gouda cheese and slivered onions. And that was piloted in Florida. <laughs> The Spain, it or the not. Spain of America's southeast. Uh, the Stroop Waffle McFlurry features vanilla soft serve with caramel now, waffle cookies. Now hold I on, know, yeah, I'll fuck with this. Uh, no, I know you'll fuck with it. Now I know I'm you in. will. What? But what about Canada? The tomato mozzarella chicken sandwich is a Canadian favorite that comes with tomato and herb sauce. And then there's um, 
cheesy bacon fries that are, I guess, from Australia <laughs> is what it says here. Um, so, um, I don't know why McDonald's, it, the thing that was notable about this to me is this idea that McDonald's would say, oh, you want to know how they do it in other countries? Well, we can handle that. Here's what they have <laughs> in other places. But this is the way they're doing it elsewhere. Do you think that there's a, the same kind of exchange back the other way? Where, like, if you're, like, in Australia or Spain or whatever, and you go to McDonald's, you're just like, yeah, this is a hamburger. This is, we have this exact... Or, wait, is this where McDonald's pizza went? Has McDonald's pizza been living in Italy this whole time? That's where, yeah, it, can, it can't be in two... Every McDonald's has its own custom menu items, Travis. I'm glad that we finally got around to the... The real fact yeah. of the matter. This would be more Every akin country. to if McDonald's Spain did had a paella that they served, and they'd be like, just like in America, has it, <laughs> does it there. I do remember that when McDonald's served bratwurst, and they're like, this is from uh, Germany or whatever. It's a German hamburger. It's just they put it in a tube shape. You don't know. Eat it. You don't know anything, idiot. You're never leaving. <laughs> the McRib is back from Norway. <laughs> Enjoy. It's like McDonald's is basically betting on people not leaving the country. <laughs> is, the, is, the, is the bet that McDonald's is making here. Like, trust us. This is Spain. This is how Make Spain does it. extreme bacon burgers. Damn, take it, damn, damn. damn. Jazz, it, jazz it up for us, though, Justin. Ooh, good idea. <laughs> You guys love jazz. That's pretty good jazz, right? Ba -da -ba -da -boo -boo -boo. Skip dab doob dab doob dab doob dab scoop dab 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 <laughs> Welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast that covers the latest and greatest in brand eating. Uh, this week we have a big story for you. Heinz cream egg mayo wasn't an April Fool. You can try it for yourself. Cream egg? Cadbury cream egg ah! mayonnaise. Yeah, cause I was about to say, mayonnaise is technically a kind of creamy egg substance. We were a little wary when we, this story comes to us from uh, Metro. What day was it posted? Because uh, April 3rd. Fuck. Uh, yeah, this is right, this is happening. We were a little wary when we first heard Cadbury cream egg mayonnaise was a thing. I can't imagine why. Yeah, a little wary? You've been dulled by the past few years, I think. <laughs> Mainly because it was announced close to April Fool's Day. And it wouldn't be the first time this product was announced as an April Fool. But actually, the news is true. We regret to inform you. We regret you. to inform you that this... <laughs> Day that will live Hug in infamy. Your loved ones close. <laughs> uh, near my God to thee, the creamy condiment <laughs> does exist. You can actually try it. Heinz and Cadbury have partnered in hell to create. <laughs> it's called the Heinz Seriously Good Cadbury Cream Egg Mayonnaise. What's up? We're Coca-Cola. We made a broccoli flavor. We called it Serious It's Good. <laughs> Try it once, coward. This unusual concoction is going to be available for a limited time, thank Christ, <laughs> at a unique Heinz X Cadbury cream egg installation, which is a bad place <laughs> at the Truman Brewery in London, sadly from a, uh, April 11th through the 13th. I gotta buy some plane tickets. There's a yeah. caption. <laughs> the caption of the photo says, the mayonnaise, which was, is a pot of mayo mixed with pieces of cream egg. Hold on, it's a Cadbury aioli? 
I can't believe they've, they'd give away the, the yuck juice family secret like that. But a lot, the next sentence from this publication is wild. Though we're pleased that this isn't an April Fool, why? <laughs> we're not sure it will taste all that nice. God. Patty, that is the most generous sentence I have ever heard in the English language. And what a weird swing of a sentence of like, we're glad it's real, but also, ew. Ew, gross. I know people are always talking about uh, ethics and condiment review blogs, but it's that kind of like sticking it to the man that I really appreciate. On the launch, Martina Davis who is the brand manager for Heinz Seriously Good Mayonnaise, said... Oh, what a short time career. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And, and... I just bought a house! Ugh. And war criminal. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, she said, uh, we have had so much fun creating this unique cream egg mayo because we're sadists. Uh, <laughs> for Easter, with our friends over at Cadbury, we absolutely cannot wait for people to try it. The, um, the, the photo that they've distributed here is uh, the tub of Heinz Seriously Good Cream Egg Mayonnaise with a little Cadbury Cream Egg leaning next to it in a jaunty fashion. And then behind, in the back, blurred out, out of focus, is a jar of good old-fashioned good mayonnaise. <laughs> and it's got a real egg leaning against it, as if to say, like, you know, eggs. <laughs> They both got eggs. <laughs> it almost looks like the the the, the <laughs> wayward boyfriend meme. Yeah. He's like looking at the Cadbury cream egg, like, oh. It's uh, except they're both. It's like that photo, except if everyone in it was vomiting. <laughs> yeah. Um, the quote from Martina continues: "It's unlike anything you've ever tasted before. I should sure the fuck hope so. <laughs> uh, a true. It's a true taste sensation." If everyone loves it as much as they do, then who knows? We might have to roll it out nationwide one day. Don't fucking threaten me! <laughs> Please, don't like it as much as we do. It says, and then it says, I swear to God, it says, watch this space. So I'm assuming that Martina just spread her butt cheeks <laughs> at that point. Uh, Raphael Capitani, the brand manager for Cadbury Cream Egg, added, fuck if I know, right? Anyway... <laughs> Uh, no, uh, Raphael I've got says. A product you only think about once a year, anyway. Yeah, we're so excited to announce that our Heinz seriously good Cadbury cream egg mayo collaboration is actually happening, and we can't wait for people to try it for themselves because we're fucked up <laughs> and nasty to the max. It says here. We're looking forward to seeing cream egg and Heinz fans head down to the installation to taste this deliciously gooey spread. <laughs> taste it now you know what I will say it is evocative writing <laughs> I will say anyway that's that's this week's one squad y'all want a hold on computer's being weirdly slow for a second okay I think it's better now yeah. I want a munch squad I want a munch there's hope for the munch squad still i thought it was winding down but then i remembered that you know it's not just about current players in the fast casual market we got new people lining up to join every single well not day that's ridiculous no, that, would that would be, be weird. so shitty can you imagine here's a quick fact a Carl Jr. slash Hardee's uh, Western Bacon Cheeseburger is sold uh, every 1.13 seconds. Oh, wow. That's a Munch Squad quick fact for you. About once a second, they sell one of these bad boys. They did some fries about it. <laughs> you can Google it. This isn't about them. This is about Earl of Sandwich, a fast, casual restaurant franchise. Go fast. That was a wild <laughs> way of saying that. I'll never be able to say that again. <laughs> franchise. Co-founded by... <laughs> What? Co-founded by a direct descendant of the actual Earl of Sandwich. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's in yeah. his blood? This restaurant, this new restaurant, 
is a part of the more than five acre Fast Eddie's campus on Eagle Road, which already includes a Chevron gas station, a convenience store, a car wash, and a lube shop. The entire complex is owned and operated by local entrepreneurs Steve and Tracy Eddy, who previously built and sold a chain of fuel and convenience stores in the Treasure Valley. This is in Idaho, by the way. What if none of this is making sense to you, it's because it's like it's all in Idaho. Here's a quote. We wanted to find a restaurant concept unlike any other in the area. And Earl of Sandwich fit the bill. Earl of Sandwich appeals to the modern consumer. Those who believe that sandwiches are more than a convenience food. Oh. They should be carefully crafted and thoroughly enjoyed. We and are, what? Said Steve. <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed. We are, <laughs> thrilled, okay. we are thrilled to add Earl of Sandwich to our facility and are confident it will become the sandwich of choice for everyone in the community. Hey, so just so I can get this uh, hunk of shit straight, they said that they said, they said they wanted to think of an idea that no one had ever done and like, oh, we're revolutioning the idea of, of quick service restaurants. So we went with sandwiches. Sandwich is made by a fucking king, Travis. Sandwich is made by literal, actual royalty. I've eaten at Lord Quiznos. This is one of the wildest paragraphs in the Much Quiet History. The Earl of Sandwich concept revolves around the story of John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. He was a British nobleman, an avid gambler, who, not wanting to leave the card table to eat, asked for a serving of roast beef to be placed between two slices of bread so he could eat with his hands. Thus, the sandwich was born in 1762. Some 242 years later, Lord John Montague, the 11th Earl of Sandwich and direct descendant of the inventor of the sandwich, partnered with Robert Earl, not an Earl, but Robert Earl. <laughs> Robert Earl of Earl of Sandwich. Earl, who is the founder and CEO of Planet Hollywood, what? to reclaim and reinvent the greatest of all quick food. So you think for like 242 years, everyone in this dude's fucking family is like, can we not talk about sandwiches? We did it one time. We made up a snack, and that's our whole fucking thing. Yes. And then Don't this talk guy's to the like Lord of Cheetos. But this guy was like, was like, um, maybe we we're gonna go ahead and just capitalize on this because it seems to be the best thing that we got going. I think the the play here. You open this one in Idaho. It's not very successful, but you have a claim to the to the yeasted throne in the sense that fucking you invented the sandwich. So sorry, Subway. Sorry, Quizno. Sorry, Jimmy John. Your ass is mine now. There's no more there's no more sandwiches for you because I made them. I made well my great great granddaddy made them. But still that's copyright infringement I think. Ooh. Right? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, nobody else can make sandwiches. You can't call them this anymore. Bread bread boats. Yeah. I don't know. They'd find some way, wouldn't they? Subway would be like they we're would. serving we're serving them in between two butt cheeks. Get on over to Subway now, baby. <laughs> Do you think that the, the when Do you eat ass? It's a five dollar <laughs> ass. Come on, five dollar foot ass. Get in it. <laughs> Do you think when John Montague showed up I'm at sorry, this Lord chain, Lord John Montague, Lord John Montague, the eleventh Earl of Sandwich, showed up at this chain? He was like, "Uh huh, good, good." The Earl's Club, I love that. The original seventeen sixty two with roasted beef. They say roasted beef. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> French dip, very good. The holiday turkey. Does this one have cornbread stuffing on it? Excellent. A delicious sandwich. You've done my family pre Wait. Wait a minute. Is that Is that a quinoa chicken salad? <laughs> a, a, a salad with What is this quinoa? I think it's quinoa. It's a salad, just a regular. And he just starts flipping like bowls of salad out of the ground. Is this What's this over here? Pepperoni pizza bread? <laughs> Macaroni and cheese? No, <laughs> get it all out. It all is not it. But two slices. I cannot eat it with my hands. Chips of potatoes. <laughs> out. <laughs> Maybe salad. perhaps the chipped potatoes were between two slices of bread. This potato salad claims to be salad, but it is it has no bearing. <laughs> 
I'm just saying this all looks really good, and I'm pretty hungry I right now. I did kind of like that holiday turkey with the cornbread stuff. Yeah, that sounds promising. Really it, this all looks really good. Da, 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 da. Oh, he's back. Huh? Good. There's just a bug in the studio. Yeah, somebody get that. <laughs> I want to munch Ooh. bugs. <laughs> I want to munch. Squad. First off, it was dead to me on Netflix. <laughs> cool. Cool. I'll just say cool back. <laughs> cool. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I Okay, so this is a weird situation where I heard about this when it was first making the rounds, and I it was like such a munch squad that I had somehow assumed that it had become like I had already done it. Like once I'd heard about it, it just seemed like, oh, certainly I, I've already done this. Right. Certainly I've already done this. Um, but that I, I haven't. And so it's Garfield eats. <laughs> uh huh. This is, is this the concept of the orange cat? We all love the orange cat is in it. And it's He's just the concept it. that he does consume food for calories and power. Yes. He's in it. He's in this one, okay? And it's Garfield Eats. Introducing, it says here in the subject line, the world's first Garfield mobile app restaurant. Wait, what is that? Love me, feed me at Garfield Eats. It's the world's first Garfield mobile app restaurant. So that means that when they decided to do it, they had to see... Has anybody else done a Garfield mobile app restaurant? I can't believe and they the answer is no. Rush. I know. They were the first ones to pioneer this did, at Garfield Eats. Did you say love me, feed me? Love me, feed me mm. at Garfield Eats. Does it say that? It's still the, sub, it's the subject of the, it's the headline of the press release. The headline of the press release says, like Frankenstein oh. would say, <laughs> love me, feed me, Frankenstein eats. Or like Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors might Another say. option. Uh, you all are getting, it's not that you can't see the forest for the trees. There's like a big sign outside that's like trees ahead and you've stopped there. Okay. Like you need to come with me, okay? Garfield is, this is how this press release fucking starts, okay? Garfield is the most read comic strip in the world. You know that Garfield eats. <laughs> Holy shit! I what? do know that's that! That's the first... Garfield is the most read comic strip in the world. M dash, you know that Garfield eats. I remember that a about lot. him. A lot. Oh. That's a whole sentence. A lot. The fabulous, funny, that inspired. The what? Certainly they meant to say feline. Certainly they meant to say feline, but they don't. They say the fabulous, funny, that inspired books, <laughs> <laughs> movies, and TV wow. shows. Feed the fabulous, about funny. To Love him. <laughs> the fabulous funny is about to mark uh, its fortieth year. This sounds like how John refers to Garfield. If they were like old Victorian lovers, oh my fabulous funny! Uh, <laughs> this it's about to mark his fortieth year on the comics pages. So it's apropos that Garfield eats a new innovative mobile app for entertainment and ordering food will make its debut in the world. What the fuck do you think apropos means? <laughs> What do you think <laughs> apropos means that 40 years of Garfield being on comic pages is apropos to do a whole restaurant about it? Garfield Eats is a new food experience brought to you by the world's first intergaging app. Stop. What? 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 Stop. You're the Garfield <laughs> restaurant. You don't get to make up that word. That also, once again, sounds like some of the most steampunk shit I've ever heard. <laughs> It is gonna. We must apply force to the intergauge if we want to power our steam zeppelin. 
I don't want to do anything else other than this press release. This is the, the first sentence of the second paragraph of this six paragraph long press release. It's the world's first intergaging app. Mm. And it is an entertaining and engaging mm. app. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's Fuck. A, it, it's a, off. it is a, it's entertaining and engaging. It's both entertaining. This is entertaining me, but not engaging me. It's an entertaining and engaging app that replaces the quick service restaurant with the quick mobile restaurant. Oh. Okay. Not a QSR, a QMR. The app immerses the user in a complete Garfield experience. Holy wait. How much longer do we have in this episode? Because I'm starting to feel like this may be it. Now, Justin, before you continue uh, on with any details, they're just kind of Oh, I'd love to take a break, Trev. Let me hold on, let me pull over the car. They're, okay. they're just throwing out that word complete with a lot of bravado, huh? Because to me, yeah. a complete Garfield experience does involve like a costume and maybe a giant house that makes me feel like the perspective of a tiny kitty. Maybe even a box of dirt I'm supposed to shit in. Yeah. Unless I can experience this app through the Oculus Rift, mm -hmm. I don't think this is a complete Garfield experience. I'd love that to be true, but I don't I don't think that that's accurate. It's a quick mobile restaurant. The app immerses the user in a complete Garfield experience, offering cartoons and augmented reality. Holy whoa. shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cartoons and augmented reality and food. <laughs> Cause it's a restaurant. <laughs> one remember how it's a restaurant yeah because it still is <laughs> and it's got that too because it's intergaging yeah garfield eats by the way is stylized no space eats is all caps so that's powerful fucking cool it's very fucking cool it's like a it's a very punk rock of spelling garfield eats um so <clears throat> uh on the menu delicious healthy Farm to plate, and here they have in parentheses F two P. This is a free to play AR Garfield <laughs> experience. You can fucking have this this fucking fresh kale that just came from a half mile away while you put on your Google Glass and have Odie's big powerful feet step on and crush you, baby. Now we um, should warn you: there are micro transactions. I didn't even finish the. Let me finish the clause on the menu. Delicious, healthy, farm to plate lasagna, of course, and pizza, shaped like Garfield, what? and baked in a wood fire oven. Off, uh, uh, ordered through the app and delivered quickly to anyone in Dubai. <laughs> oh, Justin, you just—I have never been so quickly deflated. I know, I know. I can't fucking believe you. What you just did, what I, you just did was treasonous. <laughs> it was treason. Order through the app, it is delivered quickly to anyone in Dubai. Also, this is a sentence. Also, because Garfield loves his coffee, enter the Garfuccino. <laughs> made with 100% Arabica coffee from Italy. It's an international affair. The the word Garfuccino is the grossest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. Like, if you told me that was a euphemism for vomit, I would be like, oh, man, I got to go Garf. I have I'm a Garfuccino all over this place. I've got a running list of substances I would least like to drown in. And Garfuccino has just <laughs> rocketed up the list. Especially when you consider that one of my favorite, like, uh, abomination words, Dunkachino, is such a great word that I love saying. Yeah, and they were so close. Garfield eats co-founders. Oh, uh, no! Are they okay? No, oh, man! That's too bad. No. <laughs> Sorry. Garfield eats co-founders Nathan Mosry and Pascal Heider were born well after Garfield's rise to fame, but both were fans of the cartoon growing up. What the fuck could that possibly matter? <laughs> Knowing Garfield's so they're legit. For These aren't your bandwagon Garfield. Oh, no, they know they're going to get the brand right. Knowing Garfield's penchant for Italian food, 
They thought Garfield would be the perfect pitch man for their brand of scooter pizza, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that he's a fan of Italian. We never see like we never he's see lasagna. scenes of him like at a fancy restaurant enjoying like a, a like bolognese or something. Like he's you're gonna let you're gonna lose this because his favorite food's lasagna. All right, you're gonna lose. No, this. I know that, but his favorite food's lasagna. That doesn't mean like he's a fan of Italian. It just means he really likes lasagna. Yeah. Their vision is to make the ordering of food fun and easy, utilizing modern technology. You can use voice recognition to order. Here's the thing. How frequently do you have to order from the Garfield Eats app before you're like, I don't have the time to type this every time I want lasagna. I'm going to need to start speaking and just rolling the dice. If I could have a button like one might get from Amazon, then I would have right. that with just a picture of a Garfield-shaped pizza on it that I could push. No, I, you, no, I sold my phone. I got an Amazon Dash button for Garfield pizza, and you know what, scooter pizza. What really sucks about that is when I'm watching my, my, my television stories... And one of the characters on the show says, boy, I'd love to have a scooter deliver me a Garfield-shaped pizza in Dubai, which happens in most of my shows. Yeah, it's gonna that's, send that's off a that happens eight times in Baller's episode four. That's a false positive. That sucks. And I, maybe I don't want to go. Of course, I am always going to want a Garfield-shaped pizza. That shit's hilarious. Yeah, uh, by the way, Garfield. if you're wondering, I looked it up. Garfield-shaped pizza is like the, the outline of his face, which looks to be an impossible shape to roll a pizza out into. So mm. every one of these motherfuckers must be like hand shaped into yeah. his face. Nice. Uh, um. So, uh, okay, so Garfield Eats will adhere to, and I'm sure this was everyone's concern, uh, adhere to strict F2P guidelines mm. on supply sourcing, guaranteeing no GMOs, <laughs> that doesn't matter. Uh, no preservatives. No That's artificial Garfield colors. modified organisms. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, he hasn't he hasn't fucking licked anything. Uh, no artificial no, no artificial colors and no fertilizers. I mean, I should hope not. That would be a weird topping as these things go. They'll also use rechargeable electric scooters to deliver the food in rebox packaging that can be repurposed. Okay, anything can be repurposed. What's the Venn diagram? of people out there who are so excited about, like, is there, is there, how big is the overlap between like, yes, listen, of course, of course I wanna eat a Garfield shaped pizza or maybe even Garfield shaped lasagna, I'm not sure, but only if it is sustainably sourced and eco-friendly. Farm Otherwise, to table. Yeah. F2P. Free to play, um, no loot boxes, no pay to win. Here's something that's just a whole. There, you guys know what a nut graph is? Sure, Griffin, you probably know that from journalism. Right. Right. There's a nut graph. It's the paragraph testicles. in a press release that's so good that you can't not have a cum. <laughs> now, a nut nut graph is a thing that you like. If you're a reporter, you like save. It's like anytime you need to talk about this thing, like you can put this in and nut right anyway. there. So the nut graph for Garfield, and this is a paragraph that I'm assuming is in everything Garfield related. From here to eternity. Nearly 40 years ago, on June 19th, 1978, Garfield was born under the comics pages. The mastermind of cartoonist Jim Davis, that's not what that means. Garfield no, or, is a humorous or, wait, strip. Let's entertain the possibility. <laughs> wait, does Jim, Jim Davis not Jim, exist? Jim Davis was the fictional creation of the orange lasagna cat Garfield. <laughs> Whoa. Garfield is a humorous strip. And you know what? Humorous is just about right, huh? That really get it doesn't say riotous or funny. No, it's humorous. <laughs> it says it's humorous. It's definitely not sad most of the time. <laughs> it's this un, this unsad strip, <laughs> except sometimes it is very sad though. I will most say that of the it is time. very sad. Garfield is a humorous strip centered on the lives of a lazy, cynical orange cat who loves lasagna, <laughs> pizza, coffee, and his remote control. His owner, the long-suffering John Arbuckle. <laughs> And Odie, a sweet but dumb dog. So, it, <laughs> can you? Okay, but here's the thing, Travis. Here's the thing. This is five this paragraphs is in. This is person. I'm like, excited about this idea. I cannot is... wait to find out who this Garfield character is. Right? Who the fuck is Garfield? <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. I love all of it. F2P lasagna for sure. Who the fuck is Garfield? I cannot wait to find out about this lasagna cat. <laughs> I'm on pins and needles. 
Garfield's about who Garfield is. That's the one thing. Oh, my, God, my checkbook is out. I'm loving it. But who's Garfield? <laughs> it, gets, it actually ends on an even higher note. Garfield's creator, Jim Davis, said he was delighted with the concept. Here's a quote. In 40 years, no one has ever come to me with a better thought out plan to deliver great food in a fun Holy and engaging shit. way. Holy <laughs> shit. Really? <laughs> so Jim Davis, in Jim Davis's life, one component of it is people frequently come to him with plans to deliver great food in a fun and engaging way. No, no, oh, no, none of he you. He can't even look at his Twitter DMs anymore. It's just fucking... So sick. here's the thing, Jim. It's called the Gar Ferrari. No. And it's Garfield-shaped Ferrari, and you bring in kids love Listen, it. Listen, when I created Garfield like a half a century ago, I did so with the dream of one day turning it into an F2P home delivery food intergaging experience and you have not found it yet sir so you this take this garbage my and you bury it in a box of dirt where it belongs so you can go to garfieldeats.com and and find out uh more about that i'm very disappointed because i wanted to get the garfield eats app on my phone i think it's only in the uae but if you search garfield on the app store here's what you get garfield rush garfield uh my big fat diet my talking garfield Garfield Survival of the Fattest, Garfield Snack Time, Garfield Go, Garfield Food Truck, Garfield Daily, and Garfield Walk. This is all the Garfield apps that there are. So there's a lot of those. Wowsy bowsies, my boy. Something? This website, GarfieldEats.com, is a good one of the websites. <laughs> this website, Justin, I would, yeah. this website, it's a good website. In this website, You've seen lots of websites, folks, because the internet's been around for a bit. In this website, they do have a picture, and it's half just Garfield's face, but then the other half is what looks like an asparagus and broccoli pizza. So it's almost like he yes. is a, I'm going to say Pizza Morph, which is a new series from Scholastic that I'm very excited about, in which famous cartoon cats do turn into pizza. This website is so fucking good, Justin, I'm losing my mind. It's I think very, it, we've been looking, we've talked uh, behind the scenes a lot about trying to find that perfect excuse to do a Dubai live show. And maybe this is it. Maybe this is, maybe we, it's not, we don't go to the live show and happen to eat some Garfield shaped pizza. We go eat some Garfield shaped pizza and happen to do a Dubai live show. <laughs> there is on the website, because they did it in Canada too. It is in Canada, so it is. Well, we're never to going to Canada. Let's, just, let's admit that. <laughs> Canada. What's that? There's a vi there's a video, um, on the website that has 371 views. It was released May second, so this is off the presses. It is on the Garfield Eats website and is a three minute and forty four second long video of Jim Davis talking about. Garfield eating while he holds a stuffed Garfield Fuck and yes. cartoons of Garfield yes. play behind. Wow. That's a video that you can go see at GarfieldEats.com if you want to scoop that up. Griffin, if you want to, um, if you could edit in like 10 seconds of the audio from that, I think we'd be cleared to it uh, just to like get a little bit of that heat. Okay, don't tell Jim. Garfield Eats. I think that's been pretty well established. His lifelong love affair with pasta and pizza is legendary. In fact, if Garfield could dream up the perfect restaurant, it would feature lasagna and pizza. Well, Garfield's dream has come true, and it's in the form of a new innovative concept restaurant. Garfield Take care of the cat, and the cat will take care of you. And I'm on the website now. There is a little chat box where you do want to talk to customer service. So I did ping them, hoping to ask, like, are you planning to spread to the States anytime soon? So I said, hello. And then the, the bot responded, oh, it's you. Thanks for chatting us up. One of our friends will be, one of your friends will be happy to reply to you in a few seconds. Give us your name and number. We'll call you back. And then I panicked. I, uh, hard pass. I panicked. I said, my name's Derek. And then customer service immediately responded, we are experiencing large volumes of chat messages. I'm sure, yeah. Please leave your mobile sure. number or find our social media page called Garfield Eats app for updates, offers, and more. Call us anytime by clicking the call us icon. For every order, you will get free pause to unlock. <laughs> Guys, you will get yeah. free pause to unlock coupons. 
Wow. And Garfield exclusive series. I don't series. think you meant to do that. I don't think you meant to do that. Guys, I don't think this is Groupons misspelled, because why would they give out Groupons? I think this is Garfield Coupons is an experience that they have, a currency that they have titled Goupons. <sighs> there is a fucking, okay, guys, this is going to sound like a joke, but it's not a joke. So this Rebox thing, you can, um, and not, it's not Rebox how it sounds in your brain when I say the words. It's R-E hyphen B-O-X, right? Rebox is a thing where you can reuse right. the packaging that your food comes in and they have videos for how to do it um uh, on the website and there's a video that is 20 seconds long that says how to transform your garfield cup your garfield eats cup into a pencil holder wow and here are the instructions the instructions are this number one uses as a pencil holder that's that's it boy that's it oh boy that's it you've made me very happy garfield eats Thank you, Garfield Eats. Please come to West Virginia. I will start a fucking, I will start a a branch here. I will buy a scooter. I will just, you can franchise here, please. Please, I'll do anything. This has been our program, My Brother, My Brother, and Me, an advice show for the modern era. We hope you've enjoyed how long we talked about Garfield Eats. If you live in Canada... <laughs> You and you don't get Garfield eats. You're a criminal. I have a Yahoo here. Uh, Can I read? Oh, oh, what did you do? Nothing. Did you want to do a question? No, I wanted to do one of my patented bits. All right, do it then. What's stopping you? Well, okay. Good. Well, I I just don't like to interrupt with them. I feel like that was really irritating everybody. So I just stopped trying to interrupt with them. Who is that irritating? I'm. I we were the people you interrupted, and I thought it was. <laughs> I want a munch. Squad. Did you get I want to munch. Squad. Nailed it. Did you get it? Did Toronto! I'm so excited to. Got me. Still on the farewell tour for Munch Squad as we continue to sunset this great bit. But before the sun goes down, sun's coming up because it's summertime. And I've got two great ice cream related newses for you, the people. The first up is a quick hit of Munch Squad Jr., if you will. Uh, Baskin Robbins has Stranger Things inspired flavors. Who? For. Ego waffle? Yeah. Like a waffle? Very good, Griffin. Eleven's Heaven is a waffle cone flavored ice cream with chocolate coated sugar cone pieces and chocolate icing flavored ribbon. So that's called Eleven's Heaven because the character on that show is fictional and loves waffles. Can I guess one? Then there's up Can I guess one? Yeah. Dead person. Yeah. Dead up teen. <laughs> dead teen. <laughs> very <laughs> Dead teen. No, very close. Upside down pralines. Chocolate ice cream what? with praline pecans and chocolate caramel flavored ribbon. I don't know why that's from the upside down. That, yeah, what, what are, is that? What's thematically, how does that? I don't understand. We're not we're not done. The press release here says um because e after all, even Demogorgons love ice cream. No, fuck you. So, <laughs> they don't. <laughs> Here's the items that they have cuz it's not just about flavors, it's about it's about items. And some of these are just so f Okay, so there's an upside down sundae. There's a Demogorgon sundae. Hey, all right. There's Briar's House Lights Polar Pizza Ice Cream Treat. Shit, yes. What? Yes, you can't say, like, an object that isn't ice There's cream in your ice cream name. Briar's House Lights Polar Pizza Ice Cream Treat. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that all of it? Is it all one thing? Briar's House Lights Polar Pizza Ice Cream Treat. <laughs> if it was just like, called Polar Pizza Ice Cream Treat, know, that would be a lot. Do you remember when... Remember when Hey, nineties kids! Remember when? Remember when Winona Ryder hung up a bunch of lights to contact the ghost of her dead son in the demon dimension? Well, good news—we done made a polar pizza about it. Come on down to Baskin Robbins, <laughs> USS Butterscotch Quartz. What? I have watched every episode of this show. No fucking idea. I no fucking idea. <laughs> Eleven Aid Freeze. Eleven Aid. Eleven Aid. Cause fuck it, <laughs> fuck it all. We're done. We're 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 sending this show to the fucking ground. 
exclusive Stranger Things merchandise, including a one of a kind Steve Funko figure. <laughs> All right. Mm. Now, okay, it, what they mean is a Funko figure of the character Steve, oh. but what they have done is combined two words in very close, close proximity to make the name Steve Funko, which sounds like the owner of the company. Um, there's a there's also collectible containers. We wanted to give fans a taste of the new season of Stranger Things and are thrilled to partner with Netflix to give customers across the country an experience straight out of Hawkins, Indiana. Mm. Whether you love the show that says Carol Austin, Vice President of Marketing for Baskin Robbins, whether you love the show or just love some seriously delicious ice cream creations, we've got something for everyone because those are the two kinds of people that are on Earth. Uh, and that is that was supposed to be the Munch Squad Junior, but it's so wild. I don't think I have time to do the other one. Um, which is perhaps wilder. Well, I gotta <laughs> but, hear it, but keep it tight. Dairy Queen has unveiled a lineup of Box of Happy subscription box. <laughs> box of Happy! Listen to this, because it's really challenging. DQBoxofHappy.com <laughs> You go there, you know, you know how Dairy Queen's a place that has chicken tenders and blizzards, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, now it's a place where, in partnership with Coca-Cola, you can get a summertime subscription to three different boxes of Happy. And in the box of Happy... <sighs> oh, my God. It's, it's three months of summer-themed kits, each bringing to life a quintessential seasonal activity with a delicious twist. Quote, Although subscription boxes are hugely popular, today's families are seeking unique experiences instead of more stuff. <laughs> so what, what Maria uh, Hokinson, the executive vice president of marketing at American Dairy Queen Corporation is saying um, th is that people do love the boxes, mm -hmm. but they hate that the boxes are full of things that would be of use to them that they would want to <laughs> keep in their home. So what you're going to do is you're going to give them $45 for a subscription that will only last three months, definitely. And in the let's just use the June camp in box as an example. It's got a built in faux non flammable campfire. I'll decide what's, I'll decide to what's flammable. <laughs> exactly right. Everything's flammable. If you try hard enough, it's a non flammable campfire designed to work with a smartphone to create a warm glow and crackling sounds of a real summer bonfire. I and can't, I can't a... imagine any version of what you just described that isn't tremendously shitty. That isn't extremely, <laughs> extremely <laughs> shitty. <laughs> there's a D and there's also a DQ camp in shadow puppet storybook what? and two flashlights. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Handmade critters and imagine stories. A do it yourself <laughs> shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, DQ. <laughs> a ten dollar DQ gift card to try the June blizzard of the month. Now, the arc of this month, <laughs> parent of the year award goes to this guy that said, Hey, kids, good news. Today, we're gonna sit around a fake campfire that's powered by daddy's phone and we're gonna do shadow. <laughs> that we bought from Dairy Queen, and then when you get bored of that, you'd say you hate me and you want to go back to mom's house. I do have a $10 Dairy Queen gift certificate look, look, to you, so we will just bail. When Daddy shines a flashlight, when Daddy shines a flashlight on this page, it makes a shadow of let's see here, Dilly Bar Doug on the wall. <laughs> I don't know who fucking Dilly Bar Doug is, Dad. This book sucks, and you I don't suck. Know who Dilly Bar is Ron. It's that. No, it's that. Please. <laughs> <laughs> and so look at that it's the shadow of blizzard bill i'm walking i'm walking to mom's house mom's new friend kyle makes his own shadow puppets and he doesn't have to buy them from an ice cream store he can do a fucking monarch butterfly with one hand D dad this is the july box is a waterproof box that opens to reveal a built-in twisting sprinkler hmm in the box in the box. Mm, don't care for that. Oh man, I just can't believe I can't believe it. It, it includes a splashdown is. activity book. How many other ways are there to moisten <laughs> ch like children in a play setting? It's it's out of control. Out of control. But anyway, you can get that. 
Uh, you, uh, it, Dairy Queen is not part of the equation in in the obtaining of this. It is literally just you go to DQ Box of Happy, you subscribe, and I guess you have to come in to redeem your um, redeem your gift certificate. Man, happy tastes good. Happy do it taste do good. Do taste good though. Dun, 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 dun. I want a march squad. I want to march squad. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Munch Squad. It's a podcast within a podcast. I want to thank whoever brought me this official Dairy Queen Happy Taste Good shirt. Uh, I need complete silence before I ask, are you here? Jesus, calm, holy shit. Thank you, I really appreciate it. I also like how everyone keeps scaring Griffin. That means a lot to me. Munch Squad is a podcast within a podcast that profiles the latest and greatest in quick service dining. This, that Justin keeps threatening will die soon, and then he keeps it's on doing. its last legs. This is its farewell tour. It has tour. a million last legs, like a millipede. Um, KFC launches first exclusive drink with guests. Mountain Dew. I heard Mountain Someone Dew. Someone said Chick Fil A, and that would be the most fucking bonkers thing. KFC announces it's partnering with Chick Fil A for Chick Fil A to make a drink for them. <laughs> I love that. It's lemonade. <sighs> You're going to think I'm having some sort of episode. <laughs> and I assure you I'm not. I'm just literally reading a press release released to the press by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mountain Dew and KFC are partnering to electrify their beverage lineup with Sweet Lightning. A refreshment lit up with a punch of peach and a touch of honey flavors. It's available exclusively at KFC restaurants nationwide by July 1st. Dew is fixing up a true-to-its-roots soda (laughs) that will brighten each and every one of your taste buds. Now, here's where things get a little weird. Hold on, wait. It didn't get weird. Dew is fixing up. Just like Pa used to make. <laughs> Yeehaw! On the mountain. How did this come to be? Money. <laughs> well, it's obviously money. And uh, they're owned by the same company. That's the other thing. They're owned by the same company. How did this come to be? Meet Sweet. He's the Mountain Dew pitch man who is... Do you know the official way you write Mountain Dew, by the way? The official legal way of writing Mountain Dew is capital M-T-N-D-E-W. As the official name of Mountain Dew, the Mountain Dew pitchman who is sweet, smooth, and lightning fast enough to become a mainstay at KFC, where the food is finger licking good. How did it go down? With a glass of, <laughs> with a glass is always full swagger, Sweet strolls into Colonel Sanders' office with his southern charm. Holy shit. And wins him over quicker than a bowl of lightning could strike. Fuck you. The, the no, cr- Justin, I'm saying to you, my brother. Fuck it's you. not me, it's Tipsy Pete, the tail spinner. <laughs> a colonel and sweet shook on it. So wait, right now, you're saying that this- Can rest- I read my fucking fan yes. fiction? <laughs> this is, I was about to say, this is some, this is some legit AO3 shit for sure. Okay. The colonel and sweet shook on it. A green sweet lightning would not be served in any other restaurant, and one sweet deal was struck. Mountain Dew Sweet Lightning is the first exclusive beverage to be offered at KFC. For Dew, this is only the second time the brand has partnered with a quick service restaurant. Been around the block, huh? I can dig it. The first being the hugely successful Baja Blast. Of course, that's, of course. that's my munchies. I knew you were out there. Baja Blast uh, at Taco Bell. 
uh, a nearly decade and a half ago. Well, how time flies when you're measuring it by the amount of time that Baja Blast has been available. <laughs> Here's a quote from from Sweet. Oh no. God! No, it's not from Sweet. I wish. Like KFC, MTN DEW is inspired by bold ideas and flavors, making this an authentic relationship from the start. Now, just take a fucking second. Just take a fucking second about words. Can we take a second about words and how we just use the words an authentic relationship from the start to describe how two brands, one of them a grease peddler and the other one selling like soda meth and how they got together to do peach syrup and they were like, this is off. This is authenticity. We are fucking. This is. This is real. <laughs> to come together on an exclusive product, Sweet Lightning, is a thrill, and we look forward to delighting our customers' taste buds and pushing the envelope on creativity. You made a peach Whoa! drink. Whoa. You made a peach drink like Da Vinci before us. Sweet Lightning was developed in partnership with the food and beverage innovation experts at KFC and Mountain Dew to create the perfect pairing for KFC's original recipe fried chicken. Don't eat it with, with the crisp stuff. Don't eat it with the hot stuff. This is perfectly prepared to be a perfect pairing with the original recipe. Original been, recipe. They've left us hanging this whole time? Original recipe is... You know a, how it's been missing something? Yeah. It, the original recipe is a KFC brand staple, and the innovation experts for each brand wanted to create a beverage that is as unique as the fried chicken it was created to complement. At some point, somebody went into somebody's boss's office, and the boss said, um, this needs to be 700 words. I don't care what words are in it. But it does need to reach 700 words. We have, there, I also, are, there are no press sites at all that cover this stuff. It's only for Justin. So we got to give him some runway. What I love about this is they started this story saying, listen, how did this happen? It's not our fault. Sweet showed up and talked to Colonel Sanders. And they did it. And then later in their own goddamn press release said, our innovators here made it happen. So what's the real story, KFC and Mountain Dew? Was it Sweet and Colonel Sanders, or was it your innovators? And I won't rest till I get to the truth. The Hi, I'm Travis McElroy, cub reporter. Now, you think about it, <laughs> if you think, if you boil this down to practicality, this is an entire press release to announce the fact that around the country, Americans are gonna walk up to a soda fountain, look at the choices and go, Sweet, ugh, girl, no, ugh. I'll have Pepsi. <laughs> I'll be having a diet Pepsi today. None of that for me. Can I, is there, and this may be asking too much, but is there an image of Sweet Lightning? Oh. oh because, like, is this an MC Scat Cat situation where the... F I have a picture of Sweet that I'm going to show to our friends here oh, in Nashville. Oh, Jesus. He I does not look like what I thought he's going to look like. <laughs> It's a, it's a handsome it's a fellow handsome in a yellow suit. Yellow devil. He's the world's most caffeinated man. He looks like Satan if Satan wore a yellow mustard suit instead of the usual. He looks like Lucifer, basically. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But if Lucifer were made of piss. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Pissifer. No, it's not piss. It's pre piss. It's Mountain Dew. <laughs> that is their slogan. It's piss ingredients. This'll piss be, adjacent. This will be piss in a while. Mountain Dew. Anyway, that's much fun. How? Oh, wow! Going bassy. Okay. Oh god, that sounds. I bad. want a munch. Squad. Yeah, diggy diggy dan dan. I want to munch. Squad. Trying to make this one sexier. This is uh, a segment about brand eating. I guess is one way of putting it. It's just. It's, it's a segment about the latest and greatest in fast food innovations. And it's also a segment about how the fast food industry in this country, through press releases, is taking the English language and our culture and dismantling it piecemeal. <laughs>
for scrap. There's not even that um, much left. They're picking the bones. There's not clean. even that much. Thank you. There's not even that much left, and they are dismantling it. I have um this this one's kind of a contest uh the contest, and I want I want to see who is sort of like playing with fire the most, and who's sort of like most detrimental to language and culture. Okay. Okay. Um, so there, the one I will tell you about is Just Egg Partners with Next Level Burger to create the Brecky Burger. Hmm. And that is... Um, I need you to... There's so many words even in that. There's a company called Just Egg. Just Egg. What that's do they a, do? That's a wild ass name for a company because one, it's not plural. Uh just egg. Just the one egg. Just egg. Hey everybody, this is my new company, just the one. Oh, someone bought it. Just is the company. And the just egg is not eggs. Twist on you. It's made from four thousand four hundred Okay, Wait. this is what it says. Just egg is made from the four thousand four hundred year old mung bean. Amazing to think those are still fresh enough for human consumption, but here we are. And the baked patty version used by Next Level Burger has more protein than conventional chicken eggs. So this is like a fake eggs with vegan sausage and vegan bacon. I mean, on a on a burger, it's uh, it, the thing is called the Brecky Burger, and I find that highly upsetting. It's not great. It obviously gets third place. Okay, I'm more upset by the fact Crit that they make vegan eggs and they call it just egg and that seems like it, it's like it's, it's just egg it's ju oh it's not oh, this <laughs> it's just egg tony eat it Easy. go ahead just, just try, try it. it tony the pizza hut cheesy bite pizza has returned for a limited time uh it's just in time for summer and here's the quote only pizza hut can bring you a bold creation an epic pizza eating experience like cheesy bites pizza says Marianne Radley, huh. chief brand officer of Pizza Hut, presumably because the technology is trademarked. But anyway, uh, pizza meets party with this all time fan favorite, which lets you and your friends soak up some much needed vitamin cheese. Oh, God. All <laughs> summer <laughs> no. long. I spit. Oh, my God. No. I am so far away from my computer monitor when I record my bim bam. And I got a lot of spit on it from that. Vitamin it's cheese. It's vitamin cheese, which I seems like the kind of thing to me that starts out as a joke, and then in 20 years, people are like, well, it's got to be good for you. It's got a lot of vitamin cheese. Oh, <laughs> it's not bad. So Pizza Hut shits on the floor on June 17th. Today, no, sorry, th yesterday, June 18th, as we're recording this, Krispy Kreme announced their stuffed donuts Hmm. which will be free on June 22nd, which I'm assuming has passed. Yes, it has passed, so I'm sorry. But it, the product is still available, presumably. Okay. It's round, it's glazed, and for the first time in the U.S., it's filled. Wait. Introducing a donut innovation fans have only imagined until now. Krispy Kreme's new original filled donut. Wait. The, yeah. The but Justin, but it's this one's a ring, okay? But I this one's a ring, and it's filled all the way through. Do you understand? Okay. okay. What they've no, done? I'm back. I'm back. Okay. I'm back. You're back. You can visualize it. Delivering a new taste experience for the donut verse. Fuck off. Krispy Kreme's original. Fi this is the, that's my least favorite cinematic universe that will be the most financially successful is the donut verse. Krispy Kreme's original filled is a whole new interpretation of the brand's iconic original glazed donut featuring Krispy Kreme's classic original glazed donut. This new product is initially offered with a choice of two fillings, classic cream and chocolate cream, providing the perfect bite every time. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Yeah. This is a quote from Dave Skeena, Chief Marketing Officer for Krispy Kreme Donut Corporation. Krispy Kreme was at the launch of Apollo 11, oh God. serving fresh donuts to Americans witnessing liftoff of this monumental mission. As America prepares to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, we want to give our fans a new taste experience that is out of this world. We choose to fill our original glazed donuts, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Oh God. 
No disrespect intended, JFK. <laughs> Actually, it's not hard. It's melt in your mouth. Delicious. How how could they? This is the why. Why are they doing this for this? Why do they care about the Apollo Eleven mission? They were there. They were there, Griffin. <laughs> They were there, and now they did a donut that's as good as the moon landing. It's the seventieth. Griffin, they were there. It's the seventieth anniversary of the beginning of the Manhattan Project, and we were there making sure those scientists had lots of donut fuel to blow up the whole Earth with. And it's to celebrate. We're gonna blow up your mouth with our cream fuck stuffed donut boys. Get in here and just start biting everything you see, and just wait for nuclear winter. The courtesy of your pals at Krispy Kreme. I mean, it's just, it's unfathomable. You also it's can't just, be like, and we didn't do it, not because it's easy, but because it is hard. It's not hard. <laughs> Actually, I messed up. It's not hard. I just thought it would be so fucking funny if I quoted that beloved dead president that got shot in Dallas. Remember? We were there, too. We just don't like to brag about that one. But we were there selling crispy, hot, fresh, delicious Krispy Kreme donuts that day, too. Everyone remembers Jeff K getting shot, but what do they not remember? Your pal Krusty Kreme in the audience passing out all these delicious donuts. God, market, d advertising donuts well spent, huh, Krusty Kreme? If you slow the Zapruder film down and you look at the crowd, they're clearly enjoying a lot of delicious mm -hmm. Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> but nobody, That's all I'm saying. Nobody wants to talk about that. They just want to talk about the grassy knoll and the death of our beloved president. It's the second. Yes, I agree. That is definitely the most important thing that happened there. Yes. The second most important thing is we were there with donuts at that time. Anyway, these ones are filled with cream now. So we got that going Thank for us, God I huge. can finally get a donut with cream in it. But not where you'd expect. And can even I... less donut, less donut to eat because they done cut out the middle of it. Yeah, it's basically a cream hoop with crust. Let me give you less donut for the money <laughs> and you're, you'll thank me for it. This shit is thick. Oh, is it this a dummy thick donut? It's a real thick one. Okay, good. I want a munch. Squad. 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 I like squad. Your... squad. Squad. For some I reason, want to. that one gave me the feeling of like a janitor rolling in in the middle of a meeting. <laughs> just like, I, hey, I, don't mind me, just here to empty the cans. I want a munch. I want a munch. I want a munch. Squad, 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 squad. I want a munch. I want a munch. I want a munch. Squad, 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 squad. Munch, munch, munch. That's my Manhattan transfer version. Yeah. It was really good. Good news for dirtbags. KFC's Cheetos sandwich is going national, baby. Following the limited time launches of pickle fried chicken, huh. Kentucky fried chicken and waffles, and Cinnabon dessert biscuits, the KFC Cheetos sandwich is another example of how KFC is continuing to take food innovation mm. to new heights. After an overwhelmingly successful test earlier this year, Kentucky fried chicken and fan favorite Cheetos are giving fans nation they, I, I'm, they should just say dirtbags but okay giving fans nationwide access to the sought after cheetos sandwich for just four short weeks <gasps> beginning july 1st this is a special twist on the kfc crispy kernel sandwich Ooh. this and i think this is literal in this case dangerously cheesy combination <laughs> <laughs> is made by coating KFC's juicy, hand-breaded... Okay, I'm not going to tell you guys. We're going to do a Munch Squad quiz. How do you think the KFC Cheetos sandwich is constructed? Okay. Give me your recipe for if I come into the meeting and I'm like, Boys, we got to do it. KFC G X Cheetos. Make the sandwich. What is it? I'm going to say it's hand-breaded. Including cheese. Did you say ham breaded? Because <laughs> that you're on the right track. It's ham -breaded that is a with great a place for Cheetos head to be dust. In. Okay. I think there's oh. Cheetos dust in it. And then maybe some kind of like cheesy sauce. Okay. I'm going to, Cheetos just, has to be a part of every. Yeah, whole ass Cheetos right there on top. 
I think whole ass Cheetos are on there. I think Cheetos. I think they will call it Cheetos milk. Cheetos blood. I think they'll just call it. It's it's as if hand breaded, and I love how they say it's hand breaded, as if I care about the fucking like. <laughs> TLC that went into this fucking <laughs> Yeah, I think it's Cheetos all the way down. And and with okay. each sandwich, we put just a little bit of irony in every hand breaded filet. Yeah, eat ironically, KFC. The dangerously cheesy combination is made by coating KFC's juicy, hand breaded, extra crispy chicken filet with special Cheetos sauce. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. Special Cheeto sauce. <laughs> Get that regular Cheeto sauce the fuck out of here. This is this for is Jeremy. He deserves the best. This and placing it on a toasted bun with a, this is a quote that I fucking cannot parse, with a quote, pinch of the thumb, index, and middle fingers layer of crunchy Cheetos. Huh. I don't know what that means, but that's what it said. I guess it's like how many you can get with three fingers if you imagine that grabbing motion like but, that amount of Cheetos out is like on there and then it says <laughs> with the Colonel's Mayo oh, and I don't God. know if we can hold that but I would like to not include <laughs> the that Colonel's sound Mayo like just waiting for an expose doesn't it yeah what did you think the Colonel's Mayo was this is why they keep going through the actors so fast it's because Reba steps in and she's like, gosh, I'm excited to be the colonel. And they're like, okay, so we do have to tell you the, the company secret. And they open up the briefcase <laughs> and she looks at it and says, nah, I'm done. Y'all have to find another nah. one. At the end, you are processed and turned into <laughs> the, the colonel's I haven't mayonnaise. seen Reba in a while. Where's Reba? Yeah, mm. Reba's gone. I love the new barbecue flavor of the colonel's mayo. The, KO's, the colonel's mayo is Reba. <laughs> 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 to celebrate the nationwide launch of the sandwich, Chester Cheetah will be <laughs> murdered summarily. No, it doesn't say that. Chester Cheetah will be taking over Manhattan's 14th Street KFC restaurant. Can't the police do something? What is on that Thursday? Mean? He's going to be taking. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, Travis. I'm excited. Uh, yeah. Well, it's going to be an exclusive all orange everything pop up event where customers can try the sandwich for the first time in advance of the restaurant in restaurant availability on July 1st. Why does that stuff always happen in New York? Yeah. <laughs> that just doesn't seem fair. I'm not there. Um, both KFC and Cheetos have dedicated and passionate fan bases, which if you have to say it in a press release is probably a lie. So it only made sense to merge these two iconic brands together. Did it? to provide an irresistible and flavorful sandwich that offers the best of both worlds. Oh my God. Planet, planet cheese and KFC hell. Best of both worlds, fought, uh, um, it's, uh, they're creating delicious menu items that flan fans flock toward, which is accurate I am, because they are sheep. I am looking at a picture of this sandwich. And mm -hmm. what I want to discuss now is the textural difficulties that this thing's going to provide. First of all, it's bigger than any human mouth. Like, you're going to have to attack this thing from the side. <laughs> good good news, the people eating this can only loosely be described as humans. Okay, so Next that's complaint. fine. Let's just go through it bottom to top and talk about the textual experience. Bottom, bun. That's soggy as fuck at this point. There's no way that bun's getting to you with any amount of crisp toastiness left. Then you just have wet. That's the Colonel's Mayo, and you know how I feel about that. Then you have whole ass fucking Cheetos. That's gonna be, you know, they're toothsome. They're a toothsome bite, and they're are they're gonna flop all around. They're gonna be loose. That's a challenge. And then you have very very heavily crusted fried chicken. You get the more crunch meat crunch on top of that, and then another wet bread. There's like that's su that is gonna suck. There is no way that you pull your mouth away from that thing with what you would call a good bite of it, a good cross section, good representative bite of this fucking thing. This looks uh, like a real aggro crag. I would eat the hell out of this. Sandwich. Oh my god, Travis! Listen, Travis, I wouldn't be proud of it, but I'm saying that given the opportunity to try it, I wouldn't. I don't think I'd come away. Well, I don't think I'd walk away from the experience at all, but. I don't think I'd no. walk away from the experience saying like, this is it, this is the new taste sensation. But if you gave me the opportunity to eat a Cheetos, you know, chicken sandwich or whatever, I'd probably do it. I like Cheetos. 
I like fried uh-huh. chicken. If we can hold, you know, the Colonel's mess, then I would totally check it out. <laughs> the Colonel's made such the Colonel <laughs> and Chester have made such a big mess. <laughs> They're selling I, such a big, big mess. Um, and also, quick, Munch Squad Junior, just so people don't send it to me. Arby's made a uh, carrot out of meat. Get it? Don't, yeah. It's just a fuck. They're not going to sell it. I'm only interested in things that, that they think that you, a human, would consume with your want to consume with your body. Um, so yes, that also happened. It's called the merit because it's made of meat. That man, they sure do like meat, there, huh? I've, no- I've noticed. I've noticed a thread, a sort of common thread with all of their sort of messaging. They sure do like meat. Mm-hmm. And you know what they hate? Fucking vegetables. Yeah, they don't like vegetables. They do love meat. 